Jerry. This is a Friday night show that uh, can go in many different directions because of my two wonderful guests. I have uh, uh, Randy Davis, who's been on my show before, and he is with the Gilbert Center here in uh, Barrie and uh, is uh, part of a great uh, campaign coming up um, next week, I guess, uh, the National HIV Testing Day uh, here in Barrie, the first time it's happening in Barrie. My earpiece is really bugging me. And with Randy this evening is Michael Seven. And Michael Seven is an interesting creator, artist, writer. Um, he's, the, he's the wisdom behind our, uh, our creative here, this wonderful HIV testing um, banner. So welcome, Michael. Good Thank to you. see you. Yes. Back from Costa Rica. Yes. And, um, well, we won't tell them what's going on in your <laughs> life. <laughs> Bad muscles. Yes. <laughs> And I had the gum surgery last week, so uh, I'm on uh, loopy medication. <laughs> so I'm the only silver one here. <laughs> fine. <laughs> yeah, you're doing well. Yes. Yeah. So welcome. And look Thank at uh, we have to. Oh, you have to show your shoes. Okay, those are your shoes. These are mine, of course, Coles. And then yours yeah. are. Those are really nice. Thank Brandy's you. Randy's the only one with style. <laughs> well, Class. it is Pride Mouth. Mouth. Five months, five months in, in, in Ontario or Correct. worldwide, actually. Worldwide, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Michael. Yes. You've been, you've been traveling. You're back from Costa Rica. Yes. Yeah, I, um, I have a business down there, so I go back and forth um, for, I guess, about four years now. So nice. I do design work for hotels. So I'm working on one in Panama, which is really exciting. Yeah, Boca del Toro, so it's right out in the Caribbean. Nice. Yeah. By design work, you mean like lobbies? So, uh, so I'm doing um, all the branding and then the marketing for the hotel and some collaboration with the interior design. So it's 40 villas right on the water. That's oh, quite, nice. yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. It's a fun project, yeah. Yeah, some of these Caribbean resorts, like you see them out, actually out on the water it with is, the yeah. stilts and so these are like Balinese uh, little villas each one has its own pool but they're on stilts over the over the water right over the reef okay okay wow. yeah so and they each have their own pool they have their own suspended pool yeah so <sighs> ones that's scheduled yeah, they, I can't afford to stay in, the, in them <laughs> so can we get a discount <laughs> can we yeah. get a I, I design them I don't get to stay in them so but you must get a complimentary hour oh, I'm, ang I'm angling for <laughs> that for sure hour in it. oh yeah yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm on that one. Well, you could. We could shoot a show down there. I'm sure. You got Rogers the would be delighted to <laughs> fly us all down to <laughs> Panama. And right. <laughs> How safe is it though in Panama? Panama, you. Um, uh, Panama is probably it's safe. I mean, it's a little less um, uh, safe than say Costa Rica. Costa Rica is pretty stable. Panama had some real troubles a few years ago, yeah, so yeah. they're still recovering from that. Most of the stuff I do is in Costa Rica, um, plus I have clients here, so I go back and forth. Um, my, uh, my oldest daughter and her husband and two grand, my two grandsons and uh, my ex-wife and her boyfriend went to, were in um, Costa Rica, they, uh, not far from, they landed in Liberia, okay. and then they, they drove yeah. to the coast. Yeah. And absolutely loved it. They rented yeah. a villa there, but it's absolutely yeah. beautiful. It and I said, "How safe is it? Because yeah. you're out in the middle of nowhere. Is there security? And yeah, there's a maid <laughs> 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 carrying an AK-42 or something. <clears throat> anyway, yeah. good yeah. and good to see you, Randy. You're thank you. Always colorful. I have to say, it is Pride Month. It is, and you have your U equals U. Because last time you're on the show, we talked about U equals U, and mm -hmm. we've been talking about it." particularly in recent uh, years, in the recent months. Yeah, and this t-shirt is representative of the positivity campaign that's going across the country right. this summer and again this fall about uh, smashing the stigma around HIV. So. Were you in Toronto last night? What, what video did I see? Was that from Nathan Phillips Square? No, it was from, um, oh, was it Barbara Hall Park? The park right beside the 519 where okay. the uh, oh, AIDS right, memorial is. Right. The uh, AIDS candlelight vigil was uh, Wednesday night. It's too bad I couldn't get a clip to show it because that was, uh, yeah, what, what was the name of, it was Jade a dry Electra, queen, right? Yeah, Jade Electra um, performing Undetectable, which she does to the tune of Unforgettable by uh, <laughs> Nat King Cole. Cole. I right. love that. Yeah. <laughs> that it was great. great. Yeah. And you know that what's is interesting great. is that it, 
it's nice to see a performer that's actually not that lip singing isn't a talent because that is a talent sure. to be able to move Absolutely. your lips and not you know <clears throat> mouth, mouth the words after the song after right. the words already gone by but it, it was amazing but yeah yeah she sings herself so I mean I, I'm pretty sure I haven't seen her perform much but I'm sure she lip syncs as well but uh, this was herself singing the song it was very sultry with her mm -hmm. long oh she looked beautiful and, uh, yeah yeah very emotional and she lit the uh, remembrance candle mm -hmm. I think yeah. yeah yeah did you send that to me or it was probably posted online. It was maybe a lot Bob of Lee he posted video. it or something. Yeah, I think Bob posted a video of it. John McCullough did. Um, Gord Asmus was there. He did a video. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Michael, before we went on air, you mentioned that you did something in 1999 because you couldn't stand going into the Millennium, <laughs> and, and Randy told me that's a, there's a story behind that. <laughs> You changed your, your I, last name. I did. I not, did. Not, not Michael's always been there. Yes. But, but you added. I added seven. I Michael like Seven. My, to become Michael Seven. Yes. So I, um, I had been thinking about changing my, I work in advertising and marketing. So I wanted something that, I'm in branding. So I wanted something that was attention getting and, and catchy. But I could not figure out what I wanted to to change it to, right. and I had a studio in my house, and I I went to sleep. I worked late and went to sleep, and then I as as I was waking up, I dreamt that I put my hand out and I said to somebody in the dream, "It's nice to meet you. I'm Michael Seven." And I woke up from the dream, and I promptly went right down to my studio, and I turned on my computer, and I changed my name and my email, and after that. Uh, all kinds of things happened and I got an offer to move to Amsterdam and work there and so oh my goodness. yeah so it, it was this weird kind of and then two years later when I was in Amsterdam I had bought this silver bracelet which I never had and I was at Volvo working working um, in Gothenburg and I put my hand out to shake this woman's hand and I said it's nice to meet you on Michael 7 and all of that dream came back, and I had the most intense déjà vu wow, I've ever that's had. That's crazy. That's it's crazy. Yeah, it yeah. is. And I know I remember it so clearly because I had this silver bracelet on. In which the I, dream. In the in the dream, and and which I'd never owned because I'd only bought it probably six months before. I put my hand out and shook her hand. So when you had the dream, you didn't I, own that bracelet. No, no. So <laughs> it was it was very interesting. Yeah. But seven as opposed to one, double O seven. Well, my son know. was going to change his name to Alex Eight, um, but he didn't. He's, <laughs> he, he, he's he's given up on that. He's he's you know he's happy. He's he's twenty eight now. So yeah. Oh, twenty eight. He's twenty eight. Yeah. Yeah. So my son is tw he's twenty eight, turning twenty nine. Yeah. This month, poor old thing. No. Nah. That's what I say to my Yeah, he's kids. freaking out because he's pushing 30, and I, I'm freaking out because he's pushing 30. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Grand, grandkids? No. That's when you start oh, realizing. I will feel it, I'm sure. Yeah, I have four grandsons, and then oh, you start goodness. to feel it. Oh, my. Especially when you never thought you'd ever have children, mm -hmm. never mind grandchildren, mm -hmm. and then they, they pop out, like, one after the other. Right. I think they're five, four, three, and two, something like that. Well, his girlfriend is in Australia studying, so he's Whoosh. he's home. <laughs> he's moved home from Halifax. He was at Dalhousie studying right. marine biology, and he's home now, so I have all his stuff in the house. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we you have kids, bigger, and you, we what? got a bigger storage unit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Put it in there. Yeah. Well, Randy, so. you had your daughter was staying with you, wasn't she? Yeah, she stays with us during the the school yes. year. Yeah. Well, you're so you're so helpless now. You've had to build a bigger house to accommodate. Well. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Getting tired of apartment living. Right. Yes. It is. Yeah. It's tough, isn't it? Apartment living, I mean. <laughs> I wouldn't go as far as to say it's tough. But, you, but you're in a nice condo in Barrie, though, of course. Yeah, so. when we moved here two years ago, we weren't sure what the future held, so we just decided yeah. to rent as opposed to, to right. buy. But now that we're here for as long as we've been, we want to put down some roots and yeah. get back into home ownership and build a home. So yeah, we looked to do a, a rebuild and buy something, but we couldn't really find anything. And we saw this vacant lot one day and thought, well, you're very particular, obviously, by your choice of footwear. Uh, yes, I'm not sure footwear. the decor in my home will not be quite this colorful, but my closet certainly will be. I, I must say you're probably the only one in all of 
I don't know about all of Ontario, but certainly in Barrie, it has those uh, very. Um, I've gotten a lot of compliments on them. I was at uh, Hamilton Pride. And they're leather, right? They're, they're yeah, they're Doc Martens. They're yeah, leather. They're Doc yeah, Martins, they're very comfortable. So. Got a lot of people at uh, Hamilton Pride last weekend commenting on them. So I'll be marching in the parade in uh, Toronto on Sunday. So we'll see how uh, it goes. So part of what I wanted to talk about, so this is not going to be sad in some ways, maybe. It's going to be sad, maybe, maybe not. But just the whole concept of living, loving, and losing is a, is a topic that I've often wanted to go to because I've had friends who have um, been HIV positive, uh, who have loved, and who have lost friends over the years. And I know we all have. And uh, it's tough. I just had a friend, I think I told you that, mm. uh, uh, that just passed away recently. And uh, it, it, it's amazing how it can hit you when you think of the struggles that some go through. I mean, uh, his name is Jeff, and he had struggles with uh, Crohn's disease, HIV, Hep C, depression, drug, everything, you know, and 52 years old. Wow. And just, you know, and, and, and I realized that talking to a friend of mine, I realized that no matter how much you love somebody, if they don't love themselves enough to keep going, there's nothing, there's nothing you can do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, other than trying to be there for them and reassure them, but yeah, and I'm, I feel very fortunate in that I haven't really been touched by a lot of loss in that respect. I right. certainly know a lot of folks who have, and um, and I think those sort of losses are what probably kept me closeted for as long as they did. Yeah. I didn't I didn't come out as gay till I was 38 years old. Right. You know, and I graduated high school in '85 at the height of the AIDS crisis, and and heard all the stories of of people dying, and that scared the crap out of me. And I'm I'm quite certain as I look back, that's what that's what kept me from wanting to live my authentic self at that point because I right. just it was, it was fear. I was living in Brazil in the 80s, and I never heard about AIDS or HIV. It's, well, first of all, it's Portuguese, so they may have been talking about right. it, and I would not, <laughs> not know. But I didn't, hear among, I didn't hear it among any of the folks that I was hanging around with, and uh, it, was, it was only when I came back to Canada that I heard about HIV, and I thought, what? Because when you're when you're not hearing about it, you have no clue, right? Like there's a brainwave. If you don't hear about it, you don't know. But I did. But in Brazil at the time, in the '80s, uh, people were much more concerned about the economy. The, the the country had just gone from a military government to a civilian government, so that was a big thing. And prices were skyrocketing. The only thing that was cheap was liquor and cigarettes. Because <laughs> the government yeah. thought if we keep people smoking and drinking, they won't complain. But raise the, but raise the price of petrol or anything else, it, it wasn't as much. Yeah. So yeah. HIV/AIDS was not something in the early '80s, at least there, in the circle that I hung around with in São Paulo. I never heard about it. Yeah, and it's the sort of thing now that as, you know, as, as medications have improved and we're able to actually control the virus um, once we're on medication, that you don't hear about it as often. Mm. Um, but there are still people every day that die of age-related illnesses across the world, and it's it's really it's shameful that that still happens when we have the tools to to prevent it, um, which is why we focus a lot in the U equals U campaign now on the third U, which is universal access to treatment and care and um, and methods of adherence and making sure no one's left behind because yeah. it's just when we have when we have the medications that can keep someone with li living with HIV healthy and no risk to anyone. That should be, that should be something that's universally available. But you've got struggles with, uh, you know, countries where they don't have the access, um, issues and, with and stigma. Well, absolutely, and that's yeah. that's, that's, that's the disease that we experience. have to fight. It's, yeah, that really uh, have is. You? It's stig oh, absolutely. In Costa Rica, um, I I got married um, to a Costa Rican, and I never realized the degree to which stigma keeps people from talking to their doctors. We in Canada have wonderful access to all kinds of medical support. Right. Uh, some people more so than others, yeah. but for the most part, you know, you have doctors who are very much aware of testing and making sure that you're tested and people are open about their sexuality in Canada in a way that they just aren't 
in some of these other countries, and so people don't get tested. And you know, in the four years I was living there and, and got married, and I came to realize that people do not talk to their doctor about their sexuality. They do not get tested. And there's a lot more um, prevalence of people living with HIV who are not aware of it because they've never been tested. And what happens is, you know, that disease progresses pretty quickly at the end. So you can get by with little illnesses. And if you don't have a medical um, institution that understands the, all of the little symptoms, if they're not really dialed in, you know, got mouth sores and this, they're not putting the pieces together to understand that that person, because they're not testing them. So that person is presenting all of these little illnesses cumulatively over the time, and then at the very end they realize, ah, oh. and by many times it's too, too late. late. The AIDS, they're, they're all in full-blown AIDS, and their bodies are, are just not capable. Sometimes, so, sometimes they come back, but not always. No, no. Yeah. So, um, and because there's such stigma in in talking about it, in 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 discussing their sexuality, even people who are professional and and educated, um, there just isn't the institution around HIV that there would be in Canada or in America or in the UK. Or um, so people fall through because and they don't talk about it and they don't want to talk about it. Yep. So that's true. I mean, the, the stat, the latest stats, and it varies depending on whose stats you look at, but anywhere from 14 to 20 percent of Canadians living with HIV don't know it. That's a big number. Well, that's terrifying. I mean, that's significant. Yeah. Well, they don't know it, and so in, in some cases they might not even take precautions. Oh, absolutely. To, to, well, that's to that's, protect themselves or their partner. Sure, and that's how HIV continues to be perpetuated from folks yeah. who don't realize that they're they're carrying the virus. Well, and, and to your point, Michael, in some cases there's doctors that won't talk about it, uh, or mm -hmm. you know, like it's out of their scope of practice because they don't want to get into it. They don't want to, you know, the the complexity of someone who is newly diagnosed or medications, and they just don't want to go there. Uh, hence, and, hence uh, specialists, right? Uh, HIV specialists. Absolutely. And you know, I mean, there is there is an HIV team there in in the hospitals. I mean, when when they when they know what it is. But in the general population, in, in, in the gay population, um, and I get, I'm just really talking about Costa Rica because of my experience, um, you really realize what, what we have and take for granted in terms of a medical professional, mm. um, the, the scope of it, that, peop, that they're just aware. And, they, and testing is so regular, and testing is such a part of healthcare in this country that when you go to a country where they don't test regularly, where it's something special, and they have to pay for it. People have to pay to get right, tested. Right. So you know, if you don't have private medical care, mm -hmm. um, and a lot of the population don't, they have public health care in, in Costa Rica, but if it's not, that's not dialed in, then right. there's a big miss. And so that's, I mean, you know, I went down as a Canadian, and, and with all of my points of view, only to realize that there is stigma is very prevalent and, and there's a lot of discomfort still um, in the population about being gay. Um, it's a very open-minded country. It's a wonderful country. Um, but, you know, people yeah. are not disclosing as they should and that can really impact their health care quite significantly. Well, look at Cuba. Is a medication for HIV uh, free, I think. Mm -hmm. There's no cost to it. But yet, right. being gay in Havana, it's all underground. Right. <laughs> and HIV is still, what, 46, 47 percent of HIV is still among gay men? Absolutely. Right. Yeah. yeah, something like that. Yeah. 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 Well, I remember here in, in Simcoe County, the family health care teams, uh, some of my friends who live like out of the Barry area, out of Aurelia, in between Aurelia and, and Midland, for example, or somewhere where. And, um, I remember talking to Deb Matthews at the time, who was the Minister of Health, and I was doing a, a newspaper article with her, for her, and I, I was in a phone interview, and I said, to her, I said to her, why can't someone who's HIV positive go into a healthcare team uh, and, uh, and, and get 
and get the necessary help. Why do they always have to go to specialists in Toronto that right. when there's one right. bus a day out of Midland, right. for example? Right. And uh, so there was a new doctor that came uh, into that part of town, and uh, they said, sorry, it's out of our scope of practice. So they were just left hanging. Like, I'm newly diagnosed, and I, I need some uh, uh, blood work. I need to get some, like, specialists. Like, they didn't know anybody, right? And the doctor just said, "Sorry, it's, it's, you know, you'll have to, you'll have to phone, go in Toronto. This we can put you in touch with somebody in Toronto, but you can't be running to Toronto when there's one bus a day. For example, out of Midland. Mm -hmm. Now I think there's more than one bus, but at the time there was one bus into mm -hmm. into Barrie, and then a bus into Toronto, and then you're in Toronto. What the, some appointments want, 15 minutes, 20 minutes maybe, and, and then you're, it's a whole day." Right. Yeah. 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 It's shameful the lack of access to services that we have, sp specifically in Simcoe Muskoka, um, and th there's really only one HIV. I'm going to use air quotes here. Specialist um, that folks can access in uh, in our area. Um, so I've 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 hooked up with a, a specialist out of Toronto who does uh, e visits. So I pop up my laptop and I talk to that. my specialist for five or ten minutes every uh, four to six months and get my script done. He faxes over the uh, faxes. Jeez, they're showing my age. Oh. He scans the, uh, the requisition fax. forms to fax. me that I, fax. I take fax. in and uh, How get do you my spell blood that? work done. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, those, those are options that I right. certainly recommend to, uh, to a lot of my clients. It's certainly different when you're newly diagnosed. You want to actually be able to get down and have that conversation and build that rapport with, uh, with someone. But, the fact that I've been living with HIV for almost five years now, it made it easy to s do this switch, and uh, I went down and I've, I've met with my specialist once since switching, but the rest of my appointments have all been via the internet, and it's been, it's been wonderful. He's a, he's a great guy, great uh, bedside manner, and uh, knows his stuff. He does a lot of research. So I, I've been recommending a lot of my clients to him, and he's still taking Is this patients, Dr. Fletcher? So. Yes. Yeah. 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 And he's personable, and he's somebody you can talk oh, to, yeah. which is Very so important, so. Yeah. right? I mean, uh, about anything, not just not just about HIV, but about other things oh, that sure, creep into your life when yeah. you're HIV positive. I'm yeah. I mean, I've got, I've got a GP here in town who's who's wonderful, but he's the first one to admit that he doesn't know enough about HIV to be able to really help me or service my needs. So I've, I think I've probably educated him more about. HIV in the two years I've been in Barrie and seen him as my GP than he's had through the healthcare system. That's one thing I've always remembered about my friends who are HIV positive is they know, they know more about HIV, of course, but they know a lot about the medication. You'd almost think they were, they almost think that they were doctors, that so they could tell you the side effects and I've been on this drug, I've been on that drug, and this has that effect. And, you well, know, it's because and a lot of us have to advocate for ourselves yeah, because yeah. There, aren't, there aren't those resources out there. So <clears throat> I recently switched my medication that I had been on to, uh, to a newer drug just because I'd been experiencing some side effects that I just thought sort of came with it, didn't think much of it until having a conversation actually with Michael and talking about symptoms and, and it was like... Because I'd been on the same medication that, that Randy was on and I was switched over because I was having really lousy side effects. Right. So my doctor um, at Trillium in, in the city um, was able to get me on a new drug um, as a trial, in a part of a trial in Canada. Right, right, right. So now it's here, you know, it was just at the cusp of being fully approved and brought in, but Randy switched over to it based on a conversation, because I said I had the same issue and, and it stopped when I switched this. So here's this YouTube med. talking about, mm -hmm. <laughs> like. Well, like, you find that a lot. A lot yeah, of the, the yeah. forums online, uh, yeah. folks living with right. HIV talk about these very issues and symptoms that they had, side effects, and because a lot of the side effects that you hear through some of the trials, because the trial is a shorter period of time, you don't get the long-term side effects that start to come out. And who knows, this drug that I'm on now that we're on may prove to have other side effects down the road that we're not aware of yet, but for now anyway, it's, the switch has been great for me. It's given me more energy. I don't have nearly the uh, gastrointestinal issues that I had on the previous medication, so it's, it's wonderful. Because mm -hmm. some of these meds are, are toxic to the body. I mean, they're heavy duty mm -hmm. stuff. It's not an aspirin. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> no. 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 Uh, but I found this new one to be, to be great. Like I, I really, so far. What's the name of it? Victarvi. Yeah. So one little pill. 
Yeah, it's one little pill every day. That's it. And I and I have I've felt no side effects. I've felt pretty um, significant side effects with with the other one before. Um, the same. That's what Randy and I were talking about. And yeah. and I you know we did, I did all kinds of testing with my doctor because I. I was really only on it for about seven, eight months, and in that time, the doctor wanted to rule out all of the other potential, right, you know, right. gastro, whatever right. potential. So right. lots of scopes and f fun things like that. Right. But it's interesting too, <laughs> and it's why it's important. You feel like to, a guinea pig, don't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you really but do. But it's, it's another reason why it's important to have these conversations amongst ourselves right. too, because when I went online and did research um, and compared the previous medication to to Bictarvi, all the reports I read said they were non-inferior, so one was just as good as the other. Right. Until I started talking to, to folks who had made the switch, and then when I approached my doctor about it, it was funny because I was waiting for my regular appointment and pulled up my laptop and we started chatting and he brought up the subject before I had a chance to, and it's like, funny you mention that, but, and, and he was like, well, I know you've read all the studies, but here's what we're actually seeing in reality, and mm -hmm. that convinced me that, okay, yeah, this is, let's give it a shot. And Worst case scenario, it doesn't work, and I either go back to the previous medication or I find something else. There's enough out there that there are, are other options, um, but this is working fine. But any kind of medical attention, it's good to ask. So many of us are, I, I can't speak for many of us, but I've noticed in recent years when I go for my annual, I ask questions, and I went for gum surgery last week. I don't know, I'm a little bit loopy, but anyway. But I asked the, doc, I asked the dentist, like, well, what... Well, what exactly do you do to remove that piece of tooth out of my out of the bone? You know, like, well, I just cut it, and then you're going to get two stitches. Me, but you ask those questions so that you become informed. I mean, mm -hmm. it's it's a minor thing, but but if you don't ask the questions, then you're left to thinking it must be this, it must be that, or right. you know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. or you do the same thing. You go online and read erroneous information because there's oh. a lot of crap online too, right? So mm -hmm. you have to know how to filter through that. Mm -hmm. But it's good to have support in terms of. It's, it's lived experience, so I've been on that medication, this is what it did to me, Absolutely. Yeah. And, and this is why I changed, as opposed yes. to you thinking, this must be everybody's situation. Right. Yeah. And it's, it's something that is constantly evolving too, I mean we're getting into um, injectables um, that are going to be coming down the pipeline very soon where you'll go to your doctor every 30 days and get a shot in the, the yeah. muscle in your butt. and. Yeah that's your antiretrovirals for the month. Yeah, so, yeah. And instead of having to take a pill a day, they're also doing research on um, injectables that could be you know, once every two or three months, once a year even. So, right. so we're gonna go to break. We'll come back because we wanna talk about that and more and also about the HIV testing, National Testing Day coming up on June 27th. So we'll be right back with Michael and Randy. I'm back with Michael Seven who is a creator, designer, manages his time between Costa Rica and, uh, and Simcoe County, and Randy Davis, who is uh, the Gay Men's Sexual Health Coordinator at the Gilbert Center. And um, this is a creative that both these gentlemen have been working on for some time, and we've been talking in the beginning of the show about living with HIV and our loves and losses, and uh, well, this is a love project, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. you, have, uh, you have well, the concept the concept with the hashtag at the bottom and that whole checkpoint, can you, Michael, can you talk to us about that? Because you are the creative behind it, you and Randy, but I understand. Yeah. It was Michael. Yeah. Tell us a little well, bit Well, I about wanted it. something that was very eye-catching, and we, we knew in talking to Randy that we had to extend it across a lot of different applications, flags and posters and t-shirts and buttons. Oh, yeah. Um, so yeah, buttons. And you know, we were talking about getting tested as something, something that you need to do, um, maybe taking a little bit of the, the stigma out of it. You know, it's right. just something you should be doing regularly. And so the idea of the check mark was just checking something off your list and, and keeping it that friendly. Um, and so I kind of was playing with the, something very graphic with the red ribbon um, and then the check mark. And so all of the angles kind of came out of that. Um, it's very cool. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 it turned out very nicely. It's um, I'm very pleased with it. So, and I think it's it's got that visual appeal mm -hmm. that will catch people's attention, and it feels friendly. I didn't mm -hmm. want it to feel, um, you know, it's sort of a industrial yet. Yeah. It's current. 
It is. You know, it's not yeah. like something that you'd see maybe right. sort of, I don't know, 50, 60 years ago. Right. And I like the way you've incorporated the red ribbon, which is right. the AIDS ribbon, into it. It's, it's really, yeah. Yeah. It's and like, then, of course, know your status. Um, we really want to push people really learning and understanding what their status is by getting tested. So it's, um, it, it came together really mm -hmm. well. Yeah. yeah. And it's a national Very campaign, great. right, Randy? It's going across Canada. Yeah, this is the... But, but no, sorry. It's going across Canada, but it's a global campaign, actually. Yeah, absolutely. It, this is only the second year that it's be, really been um, focused on in Canada. Um, this was our first year holding an event in Barrie. Um, but last year, the Canadian AIDS Society launched this across the country and uh, asked us to be part of the campaign this year. So, um, yeah, it's going to be a great day. It's uh, So next Thursday at uh, so the courtyard at City Hall. Wow. From Barry, noon, Barry from noon City till, Hall. Yeah, yeah, Barry City Hall from noon until 5 p.m. So we were partnering with the Simcoe Muskoka District Health Unit who will be there uh, for the afternoon testing folks uh, in a very private confidential setting. They've got a, a tent that you'll go into and get the finger prick. It takes 60 seconds to find out your status. It's amazing. Yeah, we've partnered with... Uh, it's amazing, right? It's just amazing. We've partnered with uh, Express Aid Pharmacy here in town and... Uh, oh, Andrew Shinobi. And Avail Cannabis. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, also, um, we've got uh, the mayor um, doing a flag raising for us at 12.30 um, on that day, on the 27th, uh, as well as reading a proclamation for the day, declaring it National HIV Testing Day in Barrie. We've got some... Uh, some musical performers that will be there performing throughout the afternoon as well, and some other community partners with information tables and whatnot. Um, Justine Diaz, Barry's own local drag queen, who is yeah. absolutely fabulous, will be on hand. And what's really cool is a lot of folks that I've reached out to, um, media folks, um, city councillors, business owners, uh, that I've invited to join us for the day. I've also asked, you know, if you're willing to and would like to, it would be great if you can get tested again just to show that everyone should know their status regardless of your sexuality and, and right, whatnot. Right, right, right. And not a single one of them has hesitated to say anything but yes. So I'm, I'm pretty great. excited about That's the fact great. that before the day even begins, we've got, you know, 15, 20 people that have already said that they will get tested on the day. So I think that's pretty cool. That's That for me is the most important part is the raising awareness. Even if no one got tested, I'd be happy if we could at least have people there that come out and ask questions and maybe the following week go into their own doctor and say, I, I want to be tested, I want to know my status. Because you're part of, um, I think at the Gilbert Center, they have a clinic, don't they? Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, we have the George Clinic. It's right. the uh, third Wednesday of every month. We just had one a couple of nights ago. And, uh, and that's certainly a big part of, uh, of the clinic is um, free, anonymous, confidential testing for HIV, Hep C, other uh, STIs. but. Uh, but yeah, it's just making sure folks know their status, and obviously different groups have uh, have higher risks, so they should be tested more frequently. But uh, but you know, at, at least once a year, you should be tested to know your status. Um, as you get into the higher risk groups, you know, every three months. Um, but really, anyone who's sexually active should be getting an HIV test. Well, we know that's not married people, so. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a married person, but. Uh, yeah, but you're different. I am very different, you're yes. Different. <laughs> I joke, I joke, I joke in terms of married people having sex. Yes, because of course. I think there was research that uh, a couple of years ago with heterosexual couples anyway, that after five years of marriage, they <laughs> sex was like <laughs> uh, out of the question, as shall we say. Um, so National HIV Testing Day, but that's something that's not just for one day. It's just to bring awareness, but also to lessen stigma. Because, Michael, you talked about stigma in Costa Rica, but there's a lot of stigma going on yes. in, in Barrie. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. You know, yeah. the, the, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, there's still, I mean, recent studies have shown there's um, upwards to 40% of Canadians that still believe that they can contract HIV by someone who's living with HIV who touches them or who prepares them a meal. I mean, just ridiculous, so, antiquated concepts yeah. around oh, HIV. Mm -hmm. But we're talking about decades of stigma right. that uh, yeah. that originated out of fear and ignorance. That just that takes a lot to overcome that. And the, these t sort of campaigns and making sure that uh, that we're vocal about it. And those of us living with HIV that are willing to speak up and share our stories and and give our lived experiences that can actually show people that you know whether you're undetectable or not, living with HIV, you're not a risk. You know. 
So it's important to have these campaigns. And, and one of the reasons why we sort of changed the banner, the banner you'll see just says HIV testing, not National HIV Testing right, Day, right. because we want to be able to use this graphic and, and this banner throughout the year at various exactly. testing events. Exactly. Because um, we the, the health unit partners with the Gilbert Center usually um, during Pride events locally as well, and uh, so this banner will be there for, for those testings and that kind of thing. So. One of my stories that I had, there was a board member of uh, the AIDS Committee of Simcoe County, her name was Liz Branham, and she was an indigenous woman who was the most unlikely person you'd ever imagine would would come in contact because she, she was not sexually active, but she had she met somebody and uh, she said one time we had sex one time. Mm -hmm. Anyway, she was on a poster and it was um, Lance Chilton from the New VR that mm. did that was um, a big ally for the AIDS community in Superior County. I'm talking like before you guys were born, like 15 years ago. And in the picture it was a park in uh, off Hearst. And it was Liz, her granddaughter, and a dog. And the granddaughter was in the swing, and Liz was behind her, sort of pushing, and the dog. And it said um, something along the lines of, um, you don't know if you're HIV positive unless you get tested, something like that. And, uh, and uh, so people would say, well, it can't be the grandmother that's HIV positive. Can't be the doc, the daughter. So it's got to be the dog. The dog has got to be the mm. one that's HIV positive. And I said, the dog? No, it's the grandmother. And they said, how can a grandmother be HIV positive? You know, that was the, that was that was the the lack of. And and, and I remember them saying, we got to do our work because people still think. A, that a grandmother can't be HIV positive, and, but a, a young child can be born with HIV if they're... Oh, absolutely, a, yeah, and, and then, there's, there's parts of the world, Sub-Saharan Africa, I think the majority of, of folks living with HIV there are, are women, you know? Yes. It's, it's, and it's, it's unfortunate, too, because that is a segment of the population living with HIV that there's not nearly enough research done around yeah. women living with HIV or around women and the use of PrEP, for example, things like that, that the, the focus has been so strongly on on gay men, and let's face it, the the whole um, advocacy and activism around yeah. HIV/AIDS yeah. has been led by cisgendered gay white men, right? So it's um, it's been skewed. We're seeing more and more research finally being done around uh, around women living with HIV and and the effects of the medications um, for for chest feeding and and that sort of thing, and um, and transmission of HIV um, through um, in vitro, right? I just remembered what the caption said. It said, HIV positive, it's not who you think it is. Mm. Right. That's they what thought it was the dog. And they thought it was the dog <laughs> because they thought it can't be the grandmother, it can't be the granddaughter, so it's got to be the dog. So that's what it is. HIV positive, it's not who you think it is. Right. And I thought it was brilliant at the time. And then when you realize people automatically went to the dog because they ruled out the grandmother and they ruled out the granddaughter. Yeah. So it had to be the dog. So that's interesting. Yeah, ridiculous. How, so, so the importance, my whole point in all of this, which I don't know what it is, but anyway, <laughs> is that creatives like this can be so telling to get a message across and, and, and the concept behind it. So I like that, the check mark. And so you decided on that because the red changes, doesn't it? It does. Yeah, because it goes underneath. Yeah. That's. Yeah, I, I think, you know, it's interesting because I started doing design work um, in the 80s. I was at OCAD University studying communication and design right. in the 80s. I started in 84. So oh. I moved to the gay scene in 84 from, from Orangeville. I graduated in 83. So I was, you know, in the thick of it when it was really starting to become very prevalent. And I had a, had a friend who was a designer uh, he was working with AIDS Committee of Toronto, and so I was mm. helping him do some of the some of the first designs for you know buttons and pamphlets, and um, so you know yeah, it yeah. kind of has come full circle yeah. because, and that's why you know that's why I put my hat in the ring with with Randy because I thought for me personally it's extremely important because of my own experience with what happened um, to to really make sure that people understand. I, I, I am personally on a mission to, to reach somebody who is living with HIV who does not know it. That, that's really my mission. And, and you know, Randy and I 
I mean, I'm just I'm thrilled to work with Randy. It's been it's been a phenomenal um, partnership, really. And mm. you know, we have other initiatives and things that we're that we're working on. But um, this was the first big one to go yeah. to go out public. So. Yeah. Well, champions are so important because you can't force someone to be a champion for whatever the cause is. It's like my friend Jeff. I yeah. thought he would make a great champion. In fact, I encouraged him because of many of the complexities of his own health with Crohn's and HIV, HCV, which he did overcome, but HIV and, and, and not finding someone to love him. And, and, and I said, you know, like we could give you the platform because you would be someone who could empower others that are going through the same thing yeah. but you know it wasn't it wasn't in him to do it and so you know it, and that's and you and you have to respect that right oh, absolutely you have to respect that yeah. just because someone has a lot of issues doesn't mean they want to go out there and, and encourage others that they can be overcome unless you yourself overcome them oh absolutely i mean if you had told me even two years ago that i'd be sitting here talking about my status and and going to things like the Muskoka Pride AGM where I met Michael for the first time, I was there speaking about U equals U. If you told me two years ago I'd be doing all these things and, and working at the Gilbert Center and leaving a 20 year career in finance, I'd have told you you were nuts. And be wearing rainbow boots. <laughs> that, even then. That, well that that might have been I mean, something really, I Really Michael, consider, I mean, you know <laughs> I mean, you know, you get to be a certain age, Randy, and you give up those well, I'm quite certain I'll never reach that age. So. <laughs> yeah, I, I was just forever say. you'll you'll forever be a kid. Is he, that it? Really Parts will. of me, absolutely. Yeah. 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 That's okay. That's okay because we need kids that are in their late forties. Bless you. <sighs> Saying. <laughs> Bless, you. <laughs> Bless you. Bless you. Yes. Yes. Michael, I'm interested. Where does life take you now? Does you've do you go back to Costa Rica to work? I or? do. Yeah, I go back. I'm going back for August. So. I, um, and I'm actually, it's interesting because I, I have a very good friend who has a magazine in Costa Rica. Um, and I would like to start to do some more advocacy work there mm. um, because of my experience and, and, and you know, knowing that there is such stigma. Um, so I'm trying to make some connections in terms of, um, yeah. You know, just to, again, throw my kind of design services in the ring yeah. and say, listen, I'll, I'll work with you on some campaigns. It's interesting um, because the AIDS Committee of Durham, they partner with a twin city, I don't know if it's Puerto Vallarta, but in Mexico. Okay. And they do, they exchange information. Huh. And uh, oh, they, send, they send information that they have here down to there, which they can't get. Like anything from uh, HIV testing, uh, stuff on, med um, on meds, what's available. They even exchange t-shirts and just they twin with them and uh, I think they just sent down a whole bunch of computers because sometimes funders will say here's ten thousand dollars to buy uh, uh, new technology and then what do you do with the old right. and they would send it down to uh, I think it's Port of, Port of Iona but I'm not sure. Uh, but that's an interesting concept is to partner. That is. Uh, yeah, it's interesting. I, I sponsor a young doctor. Um, he's 25, he's gay, and he's, he's, uh, he wants to be an immunologist. So, um, you know, I met him about a year ago, and he had, had, had to drop out of medical school because he just didn't have the funds, and right. he didn't have the, 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 the means within his family to be able to to secure a loan so um, get emotional so I stepped in and uh, thank you to fundraise for him so that we could pay his tuition yeah. yeah so that he could go back to medical school because you know you know they need more gay doctors in they do, in, they do. and he's such a wonderful young man he's he's just such a such a bright light um, that I, you know, my family, myself, because m my family's in Costa Rica as well, my sister's there and my brother and my parents. So um, we just thought, we're here, we live in this country, how do we give back? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so, you know, it's not a prohibitive amount a month by, by our standards, but for them it's quite a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So we're actually doing a fundraiser um, at our restaurant in August. We're gonna do a drag show. I'm actually gonna do drag. Cool. Mm -hmm. You're going to do drag. <coughs> I am. Do you have a name? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Here is, I don't know. <laughs> I, uh, 
Yeah. So I'm a li but I we because we want to make up we want to do it as a fundraiser. So, um, because you know we get some money in and help him with his tuition and he's that's awesome. It is awesome. It's yeah. So it's there's a lot there's a there's a lot of of love and positivity and strength and people really do come together you know and especially from my experience where yes the first med i had was was you know had some side effects but very quickly i you know i came back to canada fell into the medical system here was very well taken care of um yeah and you know a, a year and a bit later it's it's not even something I really think about on a daily basis, other than just to remember to take my pill. Um, yeah. And it's it's you know the fact that we live full, healthy, positive lives, and there's such fear about being diagnosed with HIV that it it keeps people back. But we are living you know happy lives. It's you, it's not a barrier to yeah. anything. But years ago. Uh, even right. someone who had cancer, there were people who were afraid that if you touch somebody who had cancer, we, we irrespective of what the cancer was, you might get it, or uh, you know, until somebody started championing, you know, like breast cancer, you know, you get people like Angelina Jolie heightening that awareness right. uh, about women having uh, mammograms. Right. And then uh, I remember years ago talking about um, alcoholism, and Betty Ford came out and said she drank her way through the White House you know, to deal with the pressure of being, you know, the the president's wife. Mm -hmm. And uh, Betty Ford Clinic came from that. Mm -hmm. So you realize over the years how important it is for peer uh, support, and 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 in in our environment now, it's become. I know at the Gilbert Center they have a few folks there that have our peers, but it's so much more. Um, empowering when you talk to somebody who's who's there, right? Yeah, who's I mean, lived there. lived experience yeah. is is really vital, I think, yeah. in in communicating to to folks who are living with HIV just what it really is, right? Um, and helping to break down and, and dismantle the stigma right. around HIV. Um, yeah. well, because there are there, there are so many folks that uh, that, as Michael pointed out, don't have the same. Privilege right. exactly. that we have, yeah. even in this country, you know, we, as much yeah. as we have a, a great system here, it's flawed, and sure. it's flawed because there isn't access for everyone, and and those are the things that we have to to champion, and mm -hmm. and I feel privileged to be in a position where I can do that. You know, it, I, I don't worry about anybody knowing my status any longer. Um, I, I speak very vocally about it, and I understand and respect those who, for whatever reason, can't or or won't. So. Yeah. The fact that I'm able to, and people like Michael are able to, and, and other colleagues that uh, advocate and, and are activists around HIV, you know, it, it's important that we we speak up and and take space so that that folks understand that these are the faces of HIV in, in 2019, and it does not have to be a death sentence. But for some, unfortunately, it still is, and that shouldn't be. Yeah. You were going to say something, Mike? No, I was just going to say, I just, you know, when I met Randy at the, at the Muskoka Pride AGM, um, when he spoke, it was so, it was so powerful and so personal. Um, it really changed my life. It really yeah. did. Because suddenly, you know, here's a man who's talking about you equals you. He's up there. He, I, you know, was very, very inspired by what he had to say. It was very informative. And it really opened my eyes because I'd, you know, been back in Canada, but I really wasn't connected mm -hmm. to anybody. I mean, like I said, I was getting my health care and things were good and progressive. Um, but suddenly, you know, I'm, I'm thinking that there is a bigger movement and that, you know, being HIV positive and being medicated and being undetectable, which is my status as well, you know, it's impossible for me to give somebody HIV, mm. and it's incredibly empowering. Yeah. Because you know it, the the fear, and and I mean I would always disclose anyway. I would always tell people. Yeah. Um, and you know I still think condoms are important because of other STIs. You know, it's exactly. it's important. Um, but to hear somebody talk and 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 be very proud of of his status. It was 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 a real game changer for me. So, and and for me, that sort of experience, if I if 
I did nothing else in my mm -hmm. activism career, mm -hmm. I'm happy. You mm -hmm. know, to have just touched one person like that, mm -hmm. that's, that's phenomenal for me. That's, and I have a great friend now, too. Amen. Um, the U equals U has been not only just a game changer, but it's interesting how, how there's been some pushback, right, from the medical profession in some cases. And, yeah, and, yeah, it's... And, 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 but, but yet, here you two gentlemen are talking about how liberating it is, and you go, why can't people see that? Why can't people be, be happy and, and pleased and, and, and uh, you know, uh, well, it's the, amazing. That, the that science is there. I mean, yeah. there's, there are more and more and more studies um, that are, have, you know, showing that there's zero risk of transmission with, with folks who are undetectable, who are taking their pills regularly, who are you know maintaining their health? Um, it's and so it is. It is empowering. It is. It and, and it changes the conversation, yeah. even within my own family. You know, it's it's. Um, you know, my son had had was was very upset and and very fearful because, for him, he'd only heard, ever heard the worst. Right. So for for me to become HIV mm -hmm. positive, and lose my husband to the disease was deeply traumatizing and upsetting for him. But being able to talk about and show him the research and the science, I mean, he's a scientist, so yeah. it, it really changed, again, his, his perspective. Right. Um, right. Because he was just extremely upset about my health. And so, you know, over, over time, we've seen the medications improve so dramatically, and I think we will see the stigma decrease, but it takes activism. It really does. And, and we're at that kind of cusp now because, as Randy says, there are still folks out there who are not in the system for, for whatever reason, right. um, have personal life challenges, you know, that don't allow them to be, um, to have access, they're, you know, for, the, for themselves. And, and so it's... Well, um, yeah, well, look at what man can do. Look at Bruce Richmond out of New York, who was HIV positive, yep. diagnosed, found out that U equals U was attainable for him, and wondered why, where, why, do, why don't other people know this? Mm -hmm. And it wasn't, and it was really through his activism and his, his making that a life project, and it went global, one guy. Yeah, I mean, U, U equals U and prevention access um, that Bruce started has only been around since 2016. No, three yeah. years. But he's traveled globally. Yeah. In fact, he's going to be in Vaughan uh, in October. No, September. Correct. Of yes. uh, 2019. Yes, of all the hot spots <laughs> that Bruce travels around. He's in Italy right now. But yes, in September, he will be coming to, uh, to, to Vaughan. Vaughan yeah. um, as part of our Gilbert Center course. and... Um, AIDS uh, Committee of York, York Region, Region and, and Moyo, uh, and Moyo uh, out of, uh, out out of, of Peel. Uh, Mississauga, Peel, yeah. Brampton, yeah, are all getting together. And he's the keynote speaker, and he's going to be bringing that message yeah, and as I mentioned earlier, uh, Bruce's message this time around is um, leave no one behind. Um, so it's making U equals U universal and focusing on uh, that third U that we're talking about now and having that universal access and the importance of making sure that uh, you know, we don't forget about folks who can't, for whatever reason, attain an undetectable status. Because yeah. quite frankly, in many ways, they're not any more of a risk than those of us who are undetectable. So, Well, because they're on meds, yeah. too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. And even if they're not, you know, as somebody who's not on medication for whatever reason, who's living with HIV, they're still not a, a real risk to the general population by any stretch of the imagination. Getting HIV is not an easy thing to do, you know? We had to work hard at it. So it's, it's not, it's not yeah. a virus that you can easily transmit. So for folks to be afraid of anyone living with HIV, undetectable or not, is just ridiculous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we've talked about our lives, we've talked about our loves, we've talked about our losses, and, and yet those lives and losses and loves are like anybody else in life. It's not just HIV, but mm -hmm. all of us living go through those kinds of things, don't we? Well, I was looking, I, I keep thinking about my friend Jeff who looked, looked for someone to love and, and never found that individual. Mm -hmm. uh, I mourn that. I don't mm -hmm. mourn that he was HIV positive. I mourn that he never uh, found somebody to love. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't because he was HIV positive. Yeah, 
because that was under control. He was undetectable, as a matter of fact, but could never, and it wasn't because he was HIV positive. It was just that person that he was looking for never crossed his path. Right. You know? Yeah, yeah it's unfortunate. Those of us that did love him, we didn't give him the love that he wanted. Right. But uh, I think that's eventually what, uh, what, what made him think that life just wasn't worth it. And so that's anybody. There's lots of people that are... Sure, HIV positive or not. Yeah, you're right. Uh, well, Gloria Vanderbilt just passed away recently, mm -hmm. and her son, uh, I think it was his name David or something, you'd think wealth, affluence, prestige, and yet, for whatever the reasons were, and I remember his mother saying to... Um, she did an interview with Anderson Cooper, and she said he was the first person I, that... I was the first person he saw when he was born, and I was the last person he saw when he, mm. when he went off the balcony at, uh, on Fifth Avenue or somewhere in Manhattan, wherever it was. So it's interesting, you know, that uh, in the end, we all have something in common, and it's not HIV. It's just living, <laughs> right? It is. Yeah, it's just living, it right? Is. Yeah. 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 And I think making the most of it. Yeah. yeah. So we've cried a little bit. <laughs> Not too much. Not too much. Not too much. Michael, thank you so thank much. Thank you. Randy. Again, Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. And HIV, National HIV Testing, next week in Barry City Hall, June 27th. Seventh. Seventh. From noon to 5. 5. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in.